So, you know nothing or very little about crypto. And you may have seen some of the come up stories of people gaining ridiculous wealth. I'm probably like 18, 19, 20 around that age. And I'm racking in $15,000 a month, $25,000 a month, $40,000 a month. 50 so you want to get into it yourself. This video is going to be a complete guide on how to learn about and make profit from crypto without all the unnecessary shit that I see other videos do. Bruh. But this video won't be me telling you what to invest in or when you should enter the market. Nothing said in this video is financial advice. This is more so how to learn everything to make your own judgment. We'll be going over the different types of trading, scalp slash swing trading, long term investing, etc. This is part one of two videos. The first part is going to be a look at the basic knowledge you need to get started with crypto. The second part is going to be purely making money. Now, I know those of you that think of your dicks will be inclined to skip to that video. And if you're a risky boy, feel free. Just know that you're more likely to fall for a scam or lose it all one way or another if you don't even know how it works. Don't worry though, we'll be talking about making big money after this, I promise. So the first chapter is why crypto is a future and how it actually works. I think there's a lot of misconceptions and a general lack of knowledge on how it works. I'll try and explain this simply. The value of Bitcoin and crypto as a whole is it allows strangers online to send and receive money anonymously and without any middleman like a bank. Let's compare it to the normal way of sending money online, like bank transfer or cash app. Those are controlled by a centralized entity. Bitcoin isn't controlled by anyone. Unlike a bank, which would get suspicious if you deposit a decent amount in, you can deposit as much as you want into a Bitcoin ATM or into a crypto app on your phone without being told what to do with your money. And if someone sends you money, they can't then make you give a refund like you could with Cash App, as all transactions are permanent. With most crypto like Bitcoin and Ethereum, you can also see the history of every transaction that ever took place. It doesn't show the name or the details of the people transacting. It instead only shows a wallet address. Now, that's a bit of an oversimplified explanation. If you want a real deep dive into how it works, I recommend this free blue one brown video. Let me remind you, you don't need to know every detail about it to make money. This is just going the extra mile. Now, the reason the crypto movement is so large is because of how it counters censorship and dictatorship governments. I think Naval Ravikant explains it best. To create a censorship resistant internet. And it starts out with money because if you can create censorship resistant money, and money is the most important, you know, it, it, let's put it money is the largest bounty item in the world. Money, to most people, money is the most important thing and they'll do anything to get it. And so, therefore, if you can create a money that cannot be stolen or cannot be hacked or cannot be stopped, if you can create unstoppable money, then you can create unstoppable anything. Also, if there are some terms that flew over your head, all of it will be explained in chapter two. To understand why crypto is a future, let's look at the Canadian truck situation, where some truck drivers had their funds in their bank accounts frozen if they protested a vaccine. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau invoking emergency powers against the truckers who are protesting vaccine mandates. Banks can now freeze their personal accounts, the accounts of anyone linked to the Freedom Convoy. There was a GoFundMe set up in support of the protesters, which ended up getting shut down. The only money they could access, funny enough, were Bitcoin donations, as Bitcoin can't be seized. Founding GoFundMe and the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom, which had received 10 million Canadian dollars, equivalent to almost 8 million US dollars in donations, until the fundraising platform GoFundMe froze their funds on Friday, alleging violations of its terms of service. Now imagine, regardless if you're for or against vaccines, there are people who don't think the government should have that sort of power over the general public's money if you don't fall in line with their agenda. Bitcoins often compared to gold, as they're both immutable, meaning unchangeable, and they're both extremely useful under a tyrannical government. Here's Leia Heilpern, who explains it perfectly. 
Well, I think you said Bitcoin isn't really doing anything right now. Bitcoin is actually saving people's lives. People are fleeing war-torn um, Ukraine. They're actually leaving to go to Poland. Are they taking their gold bullion bars? Absolutely not. And even if they did get to the uh, get to the border, people are absolutely corrupt. If they get to the border, authorities could say, "Sorry, can I have one of those gold bullion bars and, and, and only let you in?" In that case, so you don't really want to be snuggling up with your Bitcoin. Nobody wants to know that you own Bitcoin. That's the fundamental value. You can flee tyranny, and right now you can flee, um, you know, lockdowns. You can flee vaccine mandates. Whatever it is your government is throwing at you you can flee that but you've been saying the price is going to crash for um you know years now i follow you on twitter i've been seeing what you've been saying and i mean if you look at the last five years gold is actually up only around 39 percent it's not really done anything whereas bitcoin is up 3200 percent perhaps we live in an entirely new era and in, in, in a new time obviously like she said if you compare the price of bitcoin versus gold over the last five years there's just no comparison at all another reason people invest in bitcoin is because people are sick and tired of inflation which is nine percent right now year after year your purchasing power is going down with bitcoin there is no infinite money printer there's a maximum circulating supply now to understand how you would make money the very basics of investing is buy low sell high this is no different when it comes to crypto i know i just spent minutes explaining the tech but we're here to make money chapter two learn the terminology used there are a lot of technical words that are used and a lot of them you really don't need to know however you definitely need to know these basic terms i'm gonna explain it in terms that even a fool can understand bull market means everything's going up bear market being the opposite is what we're in right now it's when the whole market shits a bit if I say a coin is bullish, that means I expect it to go up, bearish, vice versa. Market cap is the total value of a coin, which is price times supply. When people say Bitcoin's the most valuable coin, they think it's because it has the highest price, but that's a coincidence. It's a price and the supply that makes it valuable. Let's say I made a coin called Lanky Coin. Each one of them was priced at 100k dollars, which is more than Bitcoin but there's only five of them in existence. Yeah, it would be nowhere near as valuable as any of these coins, as a market cap would only be 500,000. In comparison, Bitcoin's market cap is $400 billion. There are also different types of coins. We have the big two, which are Bitcoin and Ethereum. They're in their own category as they pretty much control the market. Stable coins, which is entire purpose, is to be worth exactly one dollar we say it's pegged to the dollar you might think what's the point of having crypto dollars ain't they supposed to be different but the reason they exist is because people don't want to convert their crypto to the real cash world every time they want to sell so we have digital dollars instead each crypto dollar is backed by a real cash dollar in a bank somewhere at least most reputable stable coins do so the other types of coins that I haven't mentioned yet are called altcoins. Alt being short for alternative. Now in general, altcoins are more volatile than the big two. Volatile meaning reactive basically. If Bitcoin rises 5%, on average you could expect alts to go up 10 or 15%. But by that same measure, if Bitcoin falls 5%, alts will fall much harder. We can see since the beginning of the bear market, Bitcoin has gone down around 3.5 times from its all-time high. Most popular alts have gone down 6 times in Solana's case, 8 times in Kronos' case, and in Luna's case, 1.2 million times. Yes, you heard that right. We'll be talking about Luna specifically later, don't worry. Normal money, like dollars and pounds, we call fiat money. Now that's about it when it comes to basic terms you should know. If you have even a slight interest in finance, You'd pick up on most of these terms very quickly. It really doesn't get that complicated. Chapter 3. Learn all the scams in crypto. This might be the most important chapter yet. There's a reason why newbies associate crypto with scams. It's because they're so frequent. But that is the trade-off for having something so decentralized and also having the possibility of life-changing wealth. Learn about all the failed projects like Terra Luna or like Time Wonderland. Since crypto is mostly unregulated, there are a lot of awful projects, Ponzi schemes that get popular. Just take for example Terra Luna. In simple terms, 
they try to make a stable coin, not back to back cash. Historically, every other one like this had failed, but this one claimed to be different. On top of this, the stable coin offered an interest rate of 20% per year, which compared to normal banks that have rates of 0.5% per year, it was amazing. People were using this to take out mortgages. Luna had reached a market cap of $45 billion before crashing due to essentially everyone trying to sell at the same time. This lost investors billions as it dropped from $85 to $0.000001 in a couple days. KSI put $3 million in and it turned into $1,000 in a couple days. I implore you to watch this almost documentary by CoffeeZilla about it. It's mad interesting. And the funniest part about this all is the founder of Luna was calling anyone who noticed flaws in his coin broke boys. One that hits closer to home for me as I had invested in it and lost half my money in one day. This one was called Time Wonderland. The appeal was having an interest rate APY of 80,000%. Yes, you heard that right. Sounds way too good to be true. Anyone with half a brain would know you can't create value out of thin air, as this project seemingly did. As with a lot of bad projects, the bear market saw the price taking a dip. The tanking price virtually cancelled out the crazy high interest rate. The price dropped from nearly $10,000 to $900 within two months. This is before the craziest thing unfolded. The treasury manager who basically controls the funds was anonymous but we soon found out that he's a felon who was involved in stealing hundreds of millions on this canadian exchange as well as changing his name and doing plastic surgery to change his appearance this news immediately tanked the price but the fucked up part for me was i invested the day before this news broke so i literally lost half my initial investment in one day there are multiple signs of a dodgy project or as we like to call them, rug pulls, like anonymous founders, promises of insane rate of returns, Ponzi scheme economics, etc. I'ma be real, there are no get rich quick schemes, that's just someone trying to get rich off you. Anyway, that's about it. This video took me like 30 hours to make. If you could share this with someone who's trying to get into crypto, it would help me a lot. Part 2 is coming soon guys, see you then.